Severe osteoarthritis of the shoulder is clinically challenging to manage. After failed conservative treatment, total shoulder arthroplasty is usually performed. However, with patients wishing to avoid or delay arthroplasty, the role of arthroscopy for managing arthritis is evolving. The common approach to arthroscopic management of glenohumeral osteoarthritis includes glenohumeral debridement, chondroplasty, synovectomy, and removal of loose bodies. In addition, the comprehensive arthroscopic management, or CAM procedure, involves capsular releases, axillary nerve neurolysis, and if present, resection of the inferior humeral head osteophyte. The patient is placed in the beach chair position with a pneumatic arm holder. A fluoroscopic C-arm is draped into the surgical field for visualization and to aid in resection of the inferior humeral osteophyte. After establishing the standard posterior and anterior superior portals, diagnostic arthroscopy is performed, confirming end-stage osteoarthritis with degeneration of the labrum and synovitis. Unstable glenohumeral articular cartilage, degenerative labral tissue, and synovitis are debrided to a stable border with an arthroscopic shaver. The long head of the biceps tendon is released using radiofrequency ablation. An accessory posterior inferior lateral portal is established under arthroscopic visualization to allow access to the inferior axillary recess, humeral neck, and axillary nerve. The spinal needle is inserted first, which enters the axillary recess just anterior to the margin of the posterior band of the inferior glenohumeral ligament. Then, a 2.6 mm switching stick is placed bluntly into the axillary pouch to avoid iatrogenic injury to the axillary nerve. A self-retaining cannula is inserted to facilitate insertion and removal of instruments. The intraarticular inferior humeral osteophyte is resected using a shielded arthroscopic burr and arthroscopic shavers. To ensure adequate bony resection, the arm is internally and externally rotated during the procedure to bring all areas of the osteophyte into view of the arthroscope or within the plane of the fluoroscope. Curettes are used to remove hypertrophic bone from areas that are more difficult to reach with motorized instruments. Sufficient resection is verified with the fluoroscopic C arm. An inferior capsular release is then performed. Performing capsular releases at this point helps prevent excessive fluid extravasation, which can occur if the releases are done at the beginning of the procedure. Once the nerve is identified, dissection is carried out from proximal to distal to avoid damage to any branches. Multiple arborations are not uncommon. Neurolysis is considered complete when the axillary nerve is clearly visible along its entire course without soft tissue adherence or osseous impingement. You can note how close the axillary nerve is to the resected osteophyte. The osteophyte may have been a source of irritation and impingement of the axillary nerve prior to resection. Anterior and posterior capsular releases are performed after humeral osteoplasty and axillary neurolysis to prevent fluid excursion, leading to soft tissue swelling impeding the following procedures. The arthroscope is then placed into the posterior portal and subacromial space. Arthroscopic subacromial decompression with complete bursectomy is performed. The rotator cuff is visualized. Acromioplasty is performed using an arthroscopic burr through the lateral portal. The rotator interval is released at the final stages to minimize fluid extravasation. Immediately after surgery, the focus of rehabilitation is on range of motion. Passive range of motion, early continuous passive motion, and cautious stretching is used. At six weeks, functional strengthening is begun. At three months, advanced strengthening is started followed by a return to normal activities. To date, over 150 CAM procedures have been performed at our institution. Significant improvements have been noted in the ASCS, SF12, Quick Dash, and SANE scores. 15 shoulders have progressed to a total shoulder arthroplasty at a mean of two years postoperatively. Factors associated with failure include a Walsh glenoid morphology of B2 or C, lower critical shoulder angles, and a joint space less than 2 millimeters.